I'm really excited because I finally get to start this um, series on Nazarian Christianity. It kind of already started when we were talking about the Wither Fig Tree, but this is where it starts the story of the leaders of the first Nazarian churches. And I think, I haven't read this the whole way through, but um, I think that it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John from what I've read so far. And I'm kind of just thinking that um, we're going to get <clears throat> to there in about four videos it's going to take to get through this whole thing. Because this is chapter 88. Can you see the Megillah in the glasses? Yeah. Um, and the title for this chapter is Yeshua's Presentation on Various Water Therapies, including a report on his healing of a blind man and his healing of a man made ill by internal parasites, including also a report on our meeting with the silent lion of Zion. So we won't get to those last two stories today because we got a lot to cover. I wanted to recap so you guys could know where we're at right now. Yeshua and Miriam and their companions are on the east side of the Jordan River in these hot springs, chilling with this lady named Machesa. She don't have any legs. Her stories are awesome. She talks about what it's like in the first heaven. And I read that a couple months back. Machesa, a lighted spot. It's three videos and then you'll be, it goes right into this chapter because they were there. She told us her stories. And then the last paragraph, verse 314, it says, the next day, all of us Machesa, her adopted son, and Miatza, and the Lord and the lady and their companions soaked in the hot springs in the morning. And then Miriam and Yahshua gave their presentations to the guests that Machesa had invited. And then we're here right where we're at right now, chapter 88. So I'm just going to tell you now, I'm going to read the introduction sort of Yeshua gives a list and then he starts going into detail on each one so it's like a list seven primary therapies and he also reads from the Nazarene um, book Matriarchs and Patriarchs from the Shevet Raphium that's the tribe of healers so I'm going to read that in this video and the story of Mark and then in part two I'm going to read everything we're going to skip today so get ready, get your Megillah out if you have one, and uh, we're going to go on Wikipedia first to see a little bit about this um, guy, Mark. Some say he wrote the um, Book of Mark, but some say it's still it's disputed. See, mo modern Bible scholars have concluded that the Gospel of Mark was written by an anonymous author rather than identifiable historical figure. So one thing I wanted to show you was that, because I heard this before, that Mark's gospel was like the first gospel that was written. And then it, they call it the synoptic gospels where they show that Matthew and um, Luke are synonymous with, the, with Mark. They say that Mark was the first gospel. It says early church tradition taught that this view taught this view that Matthew was the first gospel written. However, other scholars argue that Mark was the first gospel written. It is the shortest of the three synoptic gospels. So scholars believe Matthew and Luke expounded upon Mark's gospel. So that's a whole nother study, but I thought it was telling and when I read that Mark is the first one that Yahshua met I'm like wow that would make sense if he was the first one that Yahshua met for him to have been the first gospel but that's just my opinion and my synchronicities that I'm always putting together pieces but we're gonna get we're gonna go right back over here from just read a little bit more about him because it said he ran into Peter <laughs> somewhere on the way Peter encountered Mark and took him as a travel companion and interpreter. It says Mark the, the evangelist wrote down the sermons of Peter. 
thus composing the gospel according to Mark. It says he became the first bishop of Alexandria and is honored as the founder of Christianity in Africa. But I thought this was cool. Look at him. They got him writing. They got some hand out of the cloud. This almost looks like a tarot card, don't it? Sitting on a lion mm, and the red checkered floor. Got his halo. Mm, mm, mm. I just wanted to show you that. We're about to get started reading now. All right, so chapter 88. So that other visitors, the general public visitors that were not a part of our group could enjoy their own soaks. The presentations were given beneath a tree on a hill not far from the hot springs. After soaking in hot water, the shade was greatly appreciated. Miriam spoke first because her talk on herbal cleansing teas was a shortened version of her talk on that topic given previously in this edition of the Holy Megillah. I will not repeat it here. I will, however, report that her talk was well received by the two dozen guests of Mechesa, many of them being healers that promised to utilize what she taught them to help their patients. So it was about two dozen guests that were invited here. Yeshua said, let us stand and stretch our arms up towards the heavens and feel deep appreciation for the gift of life. Regardless of what name you use for deity, give thanks to deity for the gift of life. After the group did so, Yeshua invited them to again sit. Behold, just as Yeshua was about to begin his presentation, two of the general public visitors to the hot spring that had been joined a soap now climbed the hill where Yeshua was about to begin his presentation to the guest of Machesa. One of the men was blind. He was guided up the hill by another man who looked rather ill. When they reached the area of the tree where Yahshua was about to speak, the ill man asked Yahshua, may I speak? Yahshua replied, yes, you may. The man said, I have long been ill with various stomach ailments and a wide variety of symptoms that are too disgusting to mention. My friend, as you can see, is blind. He came to the hot springs because they are famed for their healing properties. So we were too far away to hear anything that this woman spoke, the man gestured towards Miriam. And though my friend could not see any of you, lo, in the midst of her speaking, which I could see but not hear, my friend looked this direction and said, I feel the presence of goodness. It feels like the presence of my mother and father, yea, and like the brothers and sisters that I never had. He said, after my blind friend spoke those words, I gazed at your group assembly on this hill and behold, I perceived what I can only describe as a halo of radiant light around you all. I did not want to interrupt you and so waited until the lady was done speaking, but I confess that I feel deeply called to ask if we may join you for the remainder of this day. We return tomorrow to Galilee, which is where we live. The blind man added, this is also my request. Though I can't see you, I feel your goodness. I sense inwardly the halo of light that my friend can see around you. He said, I desire to be near you all for the remainder of this day. Yeshua replied, indeed, you are welcome to remain. I'm about to give a presentation on various water therapies and afterwards, Miriam and I will spend time with you. Miriam added, I spoke about herbal cleansing teas and after Yeshua's presentation, I will speak to you on that topic while we share a meal. In the meantime, while listening to Yahshua, I will provide each of you with a cup of an herbal cleansing tea that I just spoke about. Ginger, mint, and garlic. First, the ginger root and the garlic cloves were brought to a boil, and then after taking the pot off the fire, the mint leaves were added, and the concoction was left to steep. After drinking the tea, eat the garlic cloves. So it says, after the two new guests were served, Yeshua began his presentation on various water therapies. He said, these water therapies are part of what we have seen Nazarenes call hydrotherapy, which itself is but one part of a holistic wellness practice that we call the golden path of healing. The golden path consists of various physical therapies, one of which hydrotherapy relates to water, as well as various emotional, mental, and spiritual therapies that are studied within our mystery school. Today, I will list the main physical therapies, but will only be speaking about the one related to water.
So here's the seven primary therapies of physical therapy are one, dietary practices, two, stretching and exercise, three, internal and external water therapies, four, mud, clay, and stone therapies, five, sunlight therapies, six, breathing exercises and air baths, seven, fasting when appropriate. So we're at verse 35. It says internal and external water therapies collectively called hydrotherapy includes many possible practices. Today, I will share but a few. First, let us acknowledge that the categories can sometimes overlap a bit. For example, Miriam spoke on herbal cleansing teas, which certainly can be considered a dietary practice, but just as certainly can be considered an internal water therapy. Because herbal teas include herbs that would generally be classified under the heading of dietary practices, but we can all see that the main ingredient is water. Likewise, mud therapy is listed in category four, mud, clay, and stone therapies, because those therapies are considered earthly therapies. We collectively call this category geotherapy. Nevertheless, we can see that a key ingredient of mud is water. So the categories are a uh, convenience, but not absolute. They overlap a bit. Yeshua then spoke on the following types of water therapies. Internal use of water as a beverage, that's number one. Number two is the internal use of water as an expectorant when ill. Three, internal use of water as an enema when one has parasites such as worms. And then four, external use of water for cleansing specific portions of the skin and teeth. Five is external use of water for general cleansing and relaxation or stimulation in baths, including hot springs or cold pools, featuring instructions on Yahshua's favorite simultaneous water and sun bath, external use of water for assisting the cleansing and healing of wounds and ailments. And then seven, meditational use of water in baptisms and other initiation rituals. Okay, so now we're at verse 42 and I'm gonna skip here because this is when he actually goes into depth on each one of those um, therapies that we just named. And I'm going to save that for part two. It'll just be strictly reading. I'm going to skip all the way over to 55. In case you have the Megillah, you can read it yourself. We're skipping from verse 42 to 55, just to pick up right back where it talks about Mark a little bit. So, but like I said, don't miss part two. We're going to read what we skipped. Verse 55. After Yahshua's talk and a shared meal, the two new guests, the blind man and his friend, spent much of the evening receiving the personal attention of the Lord and the lady. The Lord noticed that the blind man had pus and signs of infection in both eyes. He made an herbal wash and cleansed the man's eyes, then covered the man's eyes with a bandage soaked in the herbal wash. Seeing that the entire group was watching, him, the Lord said, now I will read to you a portion of a, a section of the Nazarene Bible. This section is called Matriarchs and Patriarchs, and the portion that I will read from is about the various therapies that together constitute what we call the golden path of healing. You will learn that the word golden comes from one of the key practices called the golden therapy. Listen for that reference, for behold, after reading, I will perform that therapy upon the eyes of my new friend. His name, I have learned, is Mark. So, verse 62, Yahshua read the following words from the Megillah section called Matriarchs and Patriarchs. Behold, Rapha spoke the seven precepts of illumination for the way of the Shevet Raphium, the tribe of healers. Here follows those precepts. One, there is no death of the soul, only change of bodies. Two, the health and well-being of entities and their bodies is increased by certain things and diminished by other things. Three, those things that increase well-being are of the Essene way and are of Shevet Raphium. Four, the primary practices and therapies 
used by Chevette Raphium to increase the well-being of physical bodies are listed under the heading of physical therapy. Five, the seven primary therapies of physical therapy are dietary practice, stretching and exercise, internal and external water therapies, mud, clay, and stone therapies, sunlight therapies, breathing exercises, and air baths, fasting when appropriate. There are also mental therapies and spiritual therapies. Those therapies are taught within the context of Chevette Rapium and Chevette Nazarim, according to Progress in Omna. Seven, prayerful touch healing is called the golden therapy because it is deemed the royal or chief therapy, though it should be used in combination with other therapies. For when thus combined, these therapies form the golden path of healing. Yeshua, having completed his reading, said, When I cleaned Mark's eyes, I performed a water therapy, though that therapy also included the use of herbal essences. Now, in combination with that water therapy, I will perform the golden therapy, which you know is prayerful touch healing. I ask that all of you join in internal prayer for the healing of the eyes of our new friend, Mark. Yeshua placed his hands over Mark's bandaged eyes, and after a period of time, Yeshua removed the bandages and wiped away the remaining pus from around Mark's eyes. In a joyous amazement, Mark, no longer blind, exclaimed, I can see. After a time of rejoicing, the Lord spoke to Mark's companion, whose name was Luke, saying, you are suffering from internal parasites. I can help you. This healing might delay your return home by a week or so. Is that a problem? Luke replied, no, not at all. Neither Mark nor I have any obligations that would interfere. Yeshua said, camp near here, but find a private spot. Lo, you will drink Miriam's antiparasitic tea and do a daily enema each day for a week or so. I will provide you with everything you need, including instructions on how to use this enema bag made by a Nasserian healer. Most importantly, only use water that has been first boiled, then permitted to cool. Otherwise, the water might itself include parasites. My companions and I have some nearby visits to make, but we'll return here in a week to check on you. So we're going to end that as part one. But it's pretty exciting because that was Mark and Luke. And so I don't know how long this video is, but we're going to get out of here right now. And then I'll get part two up here and I could do a little bit more talking maybe. All right, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.